we're going to start the day with a very, very important uh, topic and a very, very special uh, guest. Um, today, we're going to start looking at the topic of Taiwan's campaign to end the uh, death penalty. Um, a really important topic that for some reason we haven't really covered um, in the past. And it's a topic that I think is quite interesting because it challenges our um, uh, stereotype of Taiwan being a super fr lib free and liberal uh, democracy, uh, particularly when we're thinking about things such as legalization of same sex marriage. But the trends that we see um, on the death penalty look quite different. Um, and from a European perspective, I think it's much harder for us to understand uh, that difference. And that's why I'm really delighted that today we've got a key figure in this movement to end the, uh, the death penalty um, who's come to, um, to speak to us. So our speaker today is uh, Lin Xinyi, who's uh, currently working for the Taiwan Alliance to end the uh, death penalty. This organization was founded in 2003 and uh, Xinyi has been involved right from the, uh, the start. Um, uh, first as a, uh, as a board member and since 2007 as the executive uh, director. Um, but Xinyi's work isn't just limited to uh, this campaign. If you kind of follow her on Facebook, you see that she's extremely active in a range of uh, social justice uh, causes, uh, such as human rights for uh, Tibet is another one of her uh, core um, uh, campaign. So like a lot of social movement activists, uh, she is trying to um, promote human rights with a range of campaigns. So um, today I'm going to start off with a few uh, questions uh, and then we'll open up the chat uh, to the audience to, uh, to join. Um, you can um, uh, type your questions in the chat box. Um, if you can type in um, uh, in both English and Chinese, that will make things uh, a little easier, but try to make the questions uh, fairly short. Uh, and that way we can, we can um, get through as many questions as possible because we only have through until 10.15. Uh, um, but for now, could we kind of give uh, Xi a very, very big um, uh, welcome to, to SOAS? Um, okay, uh, so Xi, let me let me just start with a, a first kind of personal question um, that I wanted to ask, and that's about how did you first get involved in this um, campaign? Because um, as we know, it's a very difficult uh, campaign. So could you tell, tell us about your personal story? Yeah, it's my pleasure. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, I'm sorry I don't speak good English, so I feel a little uh, bit nervous now. And uh, yes, a lot of foreign uh, friends uh, feel surprised that Taiwan still have the uh, death penalty. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm also surprised too. <laughs> and I, I feel uh, Taiwan is a beautiful country and we have a lot of beautiful uh, things, but the death penalty is not one of these. And uh, uh, how I uh, become involved of the, uh, the campaign, um, my, my background is sociology. So when I graduate from, uh, from college, uh, I, I find a job in another NGO for I think one year. And then after that, I, uh, I, find a job, I found a job in Judicial Reform Foundation. That is, that is 1999. And when I first uh, you know, uh, joined Judicial Reform Foundation, my colleague told me that there is a case. Uh, the case is Xi Zhi Trio. Uh, Su Jianhe San Ren, uh, three young uh, people, they are, they are uh, innocent, and, uh, but they are sentenced to death. So that time I was very young, and also they are only you know, few years older than me. So when I first uh, visit them in detention center, they are still, they are also very young. And I feel so surprised that how come they are in uh, detention center uh, and uh, they can be executed anytime that time. So this is my first experience. And then uh, in 2000, uh, Taiwan uh, have the first time is the, uh, the, uh, the political power uh, transfer. So uh, the DPP become the ruling party. 
And that time we you heard we heard from the president Chen Shui Bian said he said that Taiwan is going to abolish the death penalty gradually. So we are very exciting. And that time, the Minister of Justice, uh, Chen Dingnan, he also announced that Taiwan is go Taiwan will uh, abolish the death penalty in three years. But everyone knows that this is not happened. And and that time, that year, uh, uh, there is another case. He, uh, the 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 name is uh, Lu Zhen. He came to Judicial Reform Foundation, asked for help, because. Uh, and then we researched this case. We we found out that this is an innocent case. So Judicial Reform Foundation, we 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 want to help him that time. But I remember in September seven, um, I remember that day very clearly because um, the government executed Lu Zhen. So we are surprised that we announced Taiwan is going to abolish the death penalty and in three years and. Uh, uh, we found out that this is an innocent uh, case, and we we submit this case to Control Yuan, and Control Yuan is also willing to to uh, take care of this case. But uh, a minister of justice who said that he want to abolish the death penalty, he killed this this person. And uh, uh, it's only the second day I know this news because that time right now, you know, every time when we have the execution, the media knows first, then us, then lawyer. Then family, but that time in 2000, we only know until the second day. So I think um, I I feel very bad because that time I I, I was an editor of the uh, mag, uh, the magazine of Judicial Reform Foundation. So I have idea that we need to uh, 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 interview their family, or I, I I should try to interview himself if I can, and then write down the story. Then uh, that everyone knows his story. But then he was killed. So that's the first time I really understand what is the death penalty. If if the, if he was killed, he will never go back, no matter how hard we try. So I think that's the time that I commit myself that I don't want to just be you know, just talk about the death penalty, talk about to how to abolish the death penalty. I want to be uh, active uh, to try to abolish the death penalty. Uh, in Taiwan, and until now, this case still, uh, her fa his family and uh, NGOs in Taiwan we still try to help and try to uh, still want to help uh, to clean his name until now. But it's really uh, difficult. So that's the that's how I involved in the uh, in the campaign of, of the death penalty abolition. And um, so uh, the. The organization, the Taiwan Alliance to End the Death Penalty, was created in 2003. Yes. So that's almost uh, 20 uh, years now. Yes. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about this um, NGO um, and maybe how it's changed okay. um, over uh, the last uh, almost 20 years? Okay. Uh, I think in in year 2000, I think the the most important organization is Judicial Reform Foundation, Taiwan Association for Human Rights, and also Taipei Bar Association. They are the NGOs that who help the death row inmates. And uh, uh, and after 2000, you know, on one hand we we are happy that Taiwan find our government finally announced that we have the attitude to abolish the death penalty. But still, we see people uh, people are killed. And also that time we have uh, several cases in our hands. For example, the uh, Xu Zhichang's case. Uh, Xu Zhichang, he 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 is uh, an innocent case too. And also um, uh, several other cases. And uh, that time the uh, Xizhi Trio I mentioned, I mentioned they uh, they have the chance to uh, to have the retrial. So we don't have to worry about them. But Xu Zhichang's case is uh, is in danger in every time. So that time uh, in 2003, uh, the NGO I mentioned, Judicial Reform Foundation, Taiwan Association for Human Rights, uh, Taipei Bar Association and other NGOs, we, we decide that uh, we need to have an organization that focus on abolish the death penalty, not only to save the uh, death row inmates that who are innocent. We need to change this system. And at that time we say that we need to uh, abolish the death penalty before we abolish the death penalty, we need to have a moratorium in Taiwan, and then we start from Xu Zhichang's case. So that's how we uh, start. 
but that time is uh, the this organization is only a volunteer you know platform so lawyers professors students ngo workers we are we are all volunteers but we are very commit ourselves to do a lot of work so we we have a film festival that time and a lot of campaign that that time but uh, in but that time we don't really understand how many death row inmates and we don't know their name we we have no idea and then gradually we 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 we, we understand who they are how many numbers and uh, in 2000 uh, 2006 um, um, in 2006 uh, there is a case uh, how to say uh, I, I mentioned that uh, the execution in Taiwan uh, is not announced before they execute it so no one will know but that time uh, a journalist knows that uh, 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 Minister of Justice signed an execution order. So he came to us and asked for the info more information. He wanted to cover a very good story. And then it's a Sunday Sunday night, I remember it. And he called, he phoned me and uh, asked the case. And I say, so you mean that there is execution going to happen, but still not carry out? So it means that we can try to save him. So I immediately call a prosecutor that worked for Minister of Justice. He is the one I know. So I just call him and I say that uh, it's unfair because we, we try to help this case and we try to uh, get his file, but you don't want us to have his file. And then suddenly you say uh, the Minister of Justice signed execution order. So we, we want to um, meet Minister of Justice in the second day, in the Monday. And then when he signed the execution order, the Minister of Justice, he, he had his holiday. So we, we, we went to Minister of Justice to see the Deputy, Deputy Minister. And we argue with him. Uh, the, it, it's a long story, but it's a legal uh, argument. We argue with him and finally he say, OK, we can uh, read the file and we can we, 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 we can uh, resend the execution uh, act, extraordinary appear. So the execution not happened. And it's the uh, December, uh, it's the December uh, 2006. And then that time, a lot of international uh, uh, pressure and also the pressure from the embassy in Taiwan, uh, you know, to the government. So in the end of that year, 2006, there is no execution happened. And since from that, there is no execution uh, since 2006 to 2009. We have four years uh, moratorium. OK, and after that, I decide that or, or a TADP Taiwan Alliance to end the death penalty. We decide that we really need to have a full time uh, staff to concentrate on the job. So I volunteer say, OK, I want I, I would like to do this. So I become the first full time uh, staff. And that time is also there is also a uh, 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 um, uh, opportunity that we we, we talked to the uh, uh, judicial yuan and that time because they ha uh, Taiwan have a legal aid foundation system their uh, funding is uh, major by uh, judicial yuan and we discuss with the president we say that you need to see the death row inmates death penalty cases as a human rights issue so you need uh, you need to uh, help us and we need to give them lawyer to a uh, very good help for them and they say yes so i think things from that time we gradually we uh we uh, wrote a uh, later uh, at the beginning we just uh, read the news that to see who sentenced to death and also we try to find uh, information from judicial uh, from judicial yuan then finally we know that how many deaths were inmates in in where and we try to contact them and we say that uh, uh, the lawyer from Legal Aid Foundation can help you to uh, ask for a retrial, ask for extra ordinary appeal or a constitutional review and uh, all, uh, all, all this. So uh, then we, we know, understand the case. But uh, but that time we only do the case, we only help the case that who are already confirmed the death sentence. And uh, then gradually uh, in 2012, I think maybe before the 2012, but uh, gradually that uh, we uh, we do the case, we help the case uh, with the ongoing case. I mean, uh, every time when a, a serious crime uh, happened and uh, uh, we will uh, contact them through Legal Aid Foundation. 
and then we will try to have a, a, a lawyer team for them and try to de defense for them. So, um, so that's how change in, in the beginning. We, we can only do a, a lobby, do campaign and do the education. And then uh, like great, uh, right now, uh, I think um, half, half time of our job is to help the uh, case. And we try to have, we hope that we, they can have a very good lawyers to, to defense for them uh, on the court. And uh, the result is the um, re result is the uh, death sentence is less and less. And also uh, during this time, uh, and I think uh, another very important uh, thing happened is that uh, in 2009, uh, Taiwan, uh, you know, ratified the uh, ICCPR and ICSCR and use the uh, 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 it becomes the uh, domestic law. Uh, in, we, we implementation this to uh, governance, and uh, that also help us that we have more uh, weapon on the coast, uh, use the international standard uh, to uh, defense for, for them. And then, uh, so we, we, we also try hard to do the lawyers training, judges training, prosecutors training that we uh, hope that uh, the international human rights standard can be really be our standard. So I think uh, we a little bit change, and now uh, we have um, more staff, and we do more more job, and uh, cooperate with NGOs uh, uh, in Taiwan uh, or uh, uh, in uh, in other countries. Yeah. So, uh, so one of the things you you mentioned was um, you were quite optimistic when DPP comes to power in 2000, and they they say, okay, we're going to end the death penalty in, in three years, um, uh, but um, uh, they uh, changed their mind. Mm. Um, um, why do you feel that uh, that happened? Um, um, uh, they had a very clear statement. Um, was it uh, public opinion? Mm -hmm. Could you just comment a little on that? Yeah, I think 2000, yeah, 2000, they say, uh, they say, uh, Taiwan going to abolish a death penalty, and actually they, they do uh, they do have some proposal. I mean they do have some ideas, but all they say is because <laughs> ICC, ICCPR Article Six they didn't say that Taiwan should immediately abolish the death penalty, so they say we will gradually do that. Okay, okay. and that time we can accept that, but you need to have idea how to gradually abolish the death penalty. OK, so in 2005, they uh, they, they have a proposal uh, 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 of that, but still not very uh, powerful. And they always say that, OK, if Taiwan uh, want to abolish the death penalty, then you have to have the alternative of the death penalty. And who should uh, who should have the uh, who should uh, uh, present the uh, alternative? They always think that Taiwan Alliance to end the death penalty should do this. Let me explain because uh, in Chinese, uh, we call Tidai Si Xing Tui Dong Lian Mong. It means that we need to find some alternative to replace the death penalty. That's yeah. the Chinese name. So they say it's our duty. So in 2006, we decide that no, we want to change our name. We change our ah. name to Taiwan Fei Chu Si Xing Tui Dong Lian Mong. Although the English name is always the same, Taiwan Alliance ah. to end the death penalty, but the Chinese name a little bit uh, changed. And uh, uh, so we we want to send a very clear a message that yeah the, the 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 goal is to abolish the death penalty, and uh, the the 2000 to 2008 is a, the ruling party is the DPP, so you can say that uh, who start the moratorium, uh, DPP start moratorium because it's since uh, 2006, and but it's it's very strange that. Uh, 2008, when uh, uh, Kuomintang, Ma ying uh, he became the past president in 2008. And 2009, uh, in his, uh, in his, uh, his president, presidency, he signed the ICCPR. That's great, right? Because we have yeah. moratorium. And if we continue the moratorium, and ICCPR said that you cannot delay the, 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 uh, the, 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 uh, the, uh, the, 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 process of the abolish the death penalty. So we think that we have moratorium. 
So when we sign the ICCPR, we need to continue the moratorium. That's that's everyone think about that. But in 2010, uh, the death penalty, uh, you know, come back to Taiwan. The execution came, came back, and only because of the political. Uh, there is a legislators. He uh, he questioned this. Uh, he questioned this issue uh, in the in in uh, legislative yuan. And I have to say, at the beginning, I I feel that okay, Ma Yingzhou did more good job than uh, Chen Shui-bian because in 2009 he signed the ICCPR. Also, uh, his Minister of Justice Wang Qingfeng, he, she, sorry, she uh, very clearly announced that she is anti-death penalty person, and uh, uh, she said that she will uh, have a task force under the Ministry of Justice and to think about how to abolish the death penalty. So that's great, right? But in 2010, when this issue uh, present to the uh, in, in, in front of the uh, legislative Yuan, then Ma ying immediately, you know, just, you know, uh, I don't know, he just didn't support that. And he asked the Minister of Justice to resign. And uh, then he appoint a new uh, Minister of Justice. I think the only, uh, I think the only uh, require for th this position is he is willing to sign the execution order in 2010. And uh, I think I every time when we think about 2010, it's a very difficult year for uh, Taiwan Alliance to end the death penalty because that time uh, the new Minister of Justice, Zheng Yongfu, he said that uh, he want he 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 is willing to sign 44 execution orders. It means he want to kill all death row inmates. Mm -hmm. And then when he first uh, signed for execution order, um, then a lot of a lot of pressure from EU, from other embassy, from international organization, from Taiwan. So he on, he he's uh, only he signed for execution, then he stopped. But after that, every every year he uh, signed uh, he signed few execution order. And what they say? They always say, I need to sign the execution order because of the public opinion. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, but I, I think I can explain more details of, about what is the public opinion, because uh, I think uh, to abolish the death penalty is our duty since ICCPR become the domestic law. But yes, you need to think about the, uh, the public opinion. So I think I, I uh, in 2013 to 2014, uh, we we decide. Actually, at the beginning, we uh, oh okay. Another story is that time. Although Wang Qingfeng, who 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 uh, who who have a task force for the um, abolish the death penalty, and then he resigned. Then the execution uh, execution happened, and we 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 uh, it's very difficult for us, but in the end we decide to uh, stay because he he uh, he invite me and invite some NGOs to become the member, a committee members. And we think that's the first first time and this is a very important chance. So we need to stay in that uh, in, in that group, in that uh, task force. Yeah. And uh, so at the beginning we say that, OK, this is what the task force can do. We can do some uh, research and to support our uh, idea. So don't talk about it. Don't argue about how should we abolish the death penalty. We need to do some research. And uh, they say they don't have money. They don't want to do it. So in 2013 to 2014, uh, we are very lucky. We got funding from EU. And uh, so uh, we cooperate with the academic Seneca and uh, they conduct uh, a, a survey. And uh, this survey is very important because they interviewed 2000 uh, adults in Taiwan and uh, really uh, asked a lot of questions, 100 questions. It's a very mm. long survey. And wow. uh, the, I think the result is very clear. The, uh, I, I can explain the result. The result is in a simple way uh, is that uh, if you have, uh, if people have more ideas about the death penalty, about the judicial system, about the human rights, then they will support abolish death penalty more. 
And if the government present the alternative of the death penalty, uh, then they will choose the alternative, not the death penalty. But the, normally when the government, they say, they, men they mention about the public, public opinion, it always uh, a very quick uh, uh, phone call uh, in interview and ask you, do you support the death penalty? And of course, everyone say, yes, I support the death penalty. And always, and th this kind of question uh, interview, always after some very big crime. So mm. of course, everyone will angry and they will answer, yes, death penalty is need. But this survey, no. And uh, uh, so uh, the we 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 ask if um, if uh, if there is uh, if the alternative is life sentence without parole, and the prisoner need to work in prison, and the money he gets need to pay some part of the money to the victims, and you can find that seventy one percent of people say okay this is good good option, and mm -hmm. if we ask people. Uh, a uh, life sentence, but uh, after 25 years, uh, they can ask for parole. And this option, uh, I think uh, 45, 45 percent agree and not agree. So it's it's, it's, it's similar and and uh, life sentence uh, with uh, 25 years can uh, per, can ask for parole is the current uh, punishment, you know, uh, the after the death penalty is the the harsh the uh, the, the the most um, how to say the the harshest penalty yes yeah in Taiwan so you can see that uh, you can educate the people and the government the, the their responsibility is to present the alternative so we try to talk to the government don't say people don't say the public public opinion they want the death penalty. No, if they tell you, you give them, you give them the choice and you educated them, they can change, but they never do that. They just say uh, when when they meet the uh, people from international human rights uh, community, they will say, OK, uh, Taiwan is going to abolish the death penalty. OK, and when they meet the people or legislators uh, to question them, they say, OK, we need to we, we will uh, sign execution order, but they don't want to do anything more to to educate it to to talk to the, the the people so i think this is the um this is the i i always feel feel very uh, sad about that and uh, um but you, you can see that every time when the uh, when we have the press president uh, election or when we have the uh, uh legislator election this this issue will become an issue mm. okay and so I think um, all the candidates, they don't want to lose any vote, even one vote. They don't want to lose it. So they will they will not, you know, they will not be very brave to say, OK, I support anti-death penalty. But I want to um, I want to give you some uh, example for the for the recent uh, election. Um, uh, some Although the death penalty is not the main issue, but a lot of people raise this this issue, and uh, um, some lawmakers we know that we know, and the, all, all the media knows that uh, uh, they support anti-death penalty. Although they didn't campaign, this is not mm. their main campaign for the election, but everyone know their attitude, and they they won the election. But some lawmakers, they say, OK, I, I support the death penalty. We need to have more death penalty. They didn't want the election. So you can mm -hmm. see that uh, the Taiwanese, they have uh, they want what they want. Maybe the uh, the the security of nation, the, the 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 relationship with China, the economic is the more important thing for us when we uh, choose the uh, uh, when we vote. Of course, the death penalty is a very hard issue, but it's not the issue that will uh, uh, change. Uh, you know, the, the main issue that change their uh, uh, vote. Yeah, mm -hmm. so I feel that our lawmakers, they are they are not brave enough. Although I know some of them, they support the death penalty, uh, support anti death penalty. Yeah, so a lot of the problem then is political um, pressure, not really public. Uh, uh, opinion. Yes, I think they image they image by themselves that okay, this is very uh, 
best thing to talk or best mm -hmm. thing to support. And uh, they don't want to really understand the public opinion. I think TADP, although we are a very small NGO, but we try to do the public uh, uh, dialogue a lot. Mm -hmm. We did a lot of this kind of public public dialogue. So after the uh, the the 2000, uh, 2013 uh, um, survey uh, in in 2017-19, we we did another job. We did a consensus. Uh, con consensus uh, conference uh, mm -hmm. in every city in Taiwan. So uh, we uh, we invite people to uh, to attend the conference and uh, we discuss uh, with them about the death penalty. And and the idea is we invite people uh, no matter you support the death penalty or not, but if you are willing to discuss the alternative of the death penalty, you are welcome to discuss with us. So you can see that people who support the death penalty, but they're still willing to discuss about the alternative. And mm -hmm. when they came to our meeting, we present all the uh, facts of the death penalty, Taiwan's facts, international facts, and present to them. And then we dis discuss. And I think the result is also very good that um, because when they uh, submit to uh, join the meeting, we will ask them, do you support death penalty? And if we don't have the death penalty, what is the alternative of death penalty you, you, you prefer? We will uh, uh, ask them to answer this question before they join the meeting. But uh, when we end the discussion, you can see that people who support the uh, uh, life sentence without parole, maybe they say, OK, life sentence parole with parole is OK. Or we can have 30 years, 20 years uh, uh, sentence is also OK. And people who suppose uh, life sentence without per I mean, they, they think that OK, we, we don't have to have very harsh uh, punishment. And also, I think uh, when you discuss with people, they, they will have more ideas. They say, oh, OK, the death penalty, uh, how uh, should we abolish the death penalty is not a real issue. The real issue is the prison reform. The real oh. issue is the, secu uh, the the safety of the society. The real issue is the victim's issue. And they also give us a lot of ideas. So what, what we want to uh, show to show our government is you have the power, you have the resource. If you really want to discuss with the people, talk to people, then you have a, you will have a lot of uh, information. And when you gather this kind of information, then you need to pre present your own alternative and use this alternative to discuss with people again and again. Then people will change their mind. And this is what you should do. So, but but only NGOs that we, we did a lot, you know, very difficult job. So a few times today you've you've talked about the role of international pressure, particularly from um, uh, the EU or European uh, countries. Mm. Um, um, does this um, uh, does the Taiwan government pay much attention to that pressure? Um, and, and also I was thinking about Taiwan's international reputation or soft power. Mm. Uh, we saw what happened with, uh, for example, uh, same sex marriage and how that improved uh, Taiwan's um, uh, international image. Mm. Uh, does that kind of argument, um, uh, do you also use that argument with the, the government? Yeah, I think uh, in, two, uh, in 2006, when the case I mentioned that he didn't uh, execute it in the end, and that time the, uh, the EU embassy uh, the some uh, some uh, I I remember it's Germ Germany uh, uh, office in Taiwan and then fight uh, they fight us and uh, we discuss about that and then want to have more information and they say they will talk uh, talk, uh, uh, talk to the uh, government. Talk to the government. OK, and then uh, in 2010, when the execution happened, the EU, they have the press uh, release that is very important. I don't know how I heard my, my voice. Oh, do you have an uh, echo? Yes. But right now, no, OK, right now it's OK. OK, <laughs> yeah, so in, in, 2000, uh, in 2010, 
when the Minister of Justice Zhen Yongfu say he want to sign 44 execution order. I, I, I think he really mean it. And if there is no pressure from EU or from other countries, I think we will lose all the death row inmates, including some innocent one. So I think it's very big power because that's the first time that the, our government, they understand that, wow, when we, when we execute people, uh, you know, it's not human rights and uh, 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 the friends of ours, they will feel angry because we didn't share the same, you know, the same human rights standards. So I think that is very important. But some people will say it did not help because every year he still sign few uh, execution, uh, sign uh, executed people. But I will say if if the execution happened and the EU, the international NGO didn't say anything about that, then the government will say, OK, no one care, then we can kill more. So I think I, I really hope that things will be that easy that international pressure, then Taiwan abolished the death penalty, but it not happened. But still, the international pressure is very important. Also, I think um, uh, in the past years, we also uh, cooperate with uh, uh, EU office, French, UK and the Germany office. We invite the judges and prosecutors to Taiwan to have uh, to exchange their experience with Taiwan's uh, uh, judges, prosecutors and lawyers and also NGO. And also we cooperate with NGOs like Amnesty International, uh, International Federation for Human Rights, World Coalition Against the Death Penalty, and also the Death Penalty Project in UK, and the rights practice also best in UK. So we help each other to do some training and to exchange our strategy uh, to abolish the death penalty. I, I think this kind of support is really very important uh, for us. Uh, fantastic. Uh, I think maybe um, I still have more questions, but maybe we should open up to the, uh, the audience to um, uh, ask some uh, some questions. Let me see what we have in the chat. Um, so um, uh, Bonnie um, has some questions. So thank you for the informative talk, uh, keeping the questions brief. Um, so question one that Bonnie is asking is, are executions in Taiwan done? with a squad of three um, and a bullet in the heart. Um, and the second one is one of the key international human rights covenants has an optional protocol on the abolition of the death penalty. Was there any talk of Taiwan um, when it took the ICCPR into its domestic law to also accept this uh, protocol? OK. Um, are those questions OK? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I think how um the, the uh, how to execute the people. I think in Taiwan, only one uh, executioner uh, hold gun and uh, uh, the death row inmates, he need to lie down on the ground, uh, face to the ground, and the executioner uh, will, you know, shoot from his uh, heart, back heart. And if one bullet, okay, then one bullet. And then if not, uh, he's still alive, then the second bullet. So uh, this uh, this have an, another uh, uh, issue is the executioner. They will have trauma because they know that I'm the only one responsible these days the, for this execution. So uh, that year we um, we have um, we um, how to say we amend a law and uh, uh, we try to have more um, how to say <laughs> it's also. It's also very ridiculous, but uh, it's, a, it's a meeting to discuss how to kill people in human way. And uh, it's very difficult when we uh, join the meeting because uh, we, we don't, we, yeah, we need to say that um, how to execute people and don't, don't execute people in, in a very, you know, in human way, but of course we know that there is no human way to to execute people. But that time we ask, please um, give them the chance to meet their family, uh, at least. And uh, if they have a religion before they the execution, let them 
can meet the um, their religion uh, people. And also we raised the question about executioners, um, their um, their trauma, and they promise that they will um, uh, find someone a psychologist to help them if they have problem. But I don't think this is uh, the way to solve this question. The only way to solve this question is to end the death penalty. So yeah, and uh, I, I think a lot of people feel surprised because in other countries uh, they will have uh, three executioner or five executioner to do the execution, but in Taiwan only one, 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 one people. And uh, uh, for the second uh, second optional protocol, no, we didn't uh, we didn't sign it. So, yeah, and uh, uh, I think it's a goal, but not right now. We can achieve that. Uh, so, uh, so others feel free to uh, add your questions in in the chat or even um, uh, raise your hands. But I just wanted to ask a different question that I hadn't really thought about before, and that's about. Uh, gender and the death penalty. Mm -hmm. um, uh, um, on the one hand, um, um, are there uh, female prisoners on death row, and do um, does public opinion have a any different view on uh, female um, uh, prisoners? And the other one was about public opinion. So, is there any difference between uh, male and female public opinion on the death uh, penalty? Mm -hmm. uh, or is that um, uh, is it the same for male and female surveys on, mm -hmm. on this, this question? Mm -hmm. uh, right now we have uh, 38 uh, death row inmates and uh, one female. So seven, uh, 37 are men and one are female. And but of course, um, you know, um, when female is always commits less crime than men. So I think this percentage, it seems reasonable. So uh, on, only one uh, right now. But for the public opinion survey, we didn't we didn't uh, analyze this the this uh, factor. But I think it's a question. It is a very good uh, thing to consider because uh, people ask me uh, young people by age, young people and elder people, what's their different opinion and also I think you raised the uh, question, uh, men and female. I think we can uh, continue to uh, analyze this to see what's the result. Yeah. Um, but you mentioned uh, generation uh, mm -hmm. about younger and, and older people. Because again, if we think about the um, same-sex marriage, it's such a big difference between younger and older um, uh, citizens in Taiwan in, in terms of their attitudes. Um, and I was curious about um, um, is the trend in the right direction? In other words, are, are younger people much more kind of open minded on this issue compared to their, uh, their parents and their grandparents? Um, of course, I don't have uh, numbers of that, but I have a feeling of that okay. because um, uh, when we have uh, when we have a lot of events, uh, you can see young people or more young people to join. But of, of course, you can say that always young people to join this event. And uh, we always have uh, uh, volunteers or interns to uh, discuss with us that uh, they feel very warm in TADP because when they are home, when they discuss with family about the human rights issue, about the death penalty issue, about the same sex marriage issues, it's very difficult for them to you know, <laughs> talk with their family. So I have a feeling, uh, yes. And uh, um, also I think, um, you know, there is more um, human rights education in Taiwan compared to uh, to the past. So uh, I think I think for me the answer is positive. Yeah. Mm. And we have another question. Actually, uh, Zarinka has asked two questions. Um, one of them, is we've talked a little bit about, is about why political parties change um, uh, so uh, so quickly, and that also might allow us to talk a little bit about the current Taiwan administration and is it different from the Chen Fabian administration? Mm. But the second part of Zrinka's question is about uh, education. So she says, I believe um, the education of the very young age is crucial. Um, what's being done about educating uh, children uh, about uh, this? Mm. And again, I think this is, this, when we think about uh, gender issues, there's a lot of arguments in Taiwan about um, LGBT education in the schools. Um, um, 
would this be a problem for your campaign? For example, um, uh, can you go into schools and talk about your um, um, uh, your campaign? Uh, mm -hmm. Or would that be a problem with parents, some uh, conservative parents um, mm -hmm. protest? So there's, mm -hmm. I guess, two things there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I think um, if compared to DPP or KMT, I think uh, DPP is, is much better than KMT uh, for a lot of issue and for the death penalty issue is also. But I don't think Tsai Ing-wen, she really understand the death penalty issue. And uh, although her background is law, but not human rights. <laughs> so uh, uh, some uh, professor, some lawyer said, OK, he, she didn't understand what is the death penalty and what does that mean? And uh, I think the wor worst thing uh, of her decision is he, um, the, her, uh, sorry, her government uh, have the, I think the worst uh, Minister of Justice, uh, Tsai Qingxiang. Uh, uh, but a lot of people defense for her because they say that uh, the the DPP they uh, although they uh, become the ruling party for right now for four terms, but still the judicial system is still not um, how to say it's not uh, because you, we used to say that the uh, Guomindang they own the court, they own the judicial system, so. A lot of people see that there's no their person in in judicial, but I don't buy it because of course the judicial should be you know uh, neutral, <laughs> not 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 by party, but still uh, uh, I I I don't think that uh, so I think uh, Tsai Ching Xiang uh, he is the one that he didn't didn't really uh, care about that, and uh, every time when we uh, I just give you. Give you an example. Um, when they meet the international uh, 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 experts, when they visit to Taiwan, and they ask uh, how uh, what the government do uh, to abolish a death penalty, and their answer is, uh, we don't have much resource, and if we raise this issue, the public opinion will say you are wrong. So we we cannot do a lot of things. But we have Taiwan Alliance to end the death penalty. They did a lot of things. And then they, they say, OK, Xinyi, can you explain what you do? You know, how come a government in front of the international experts to say that we didn't do, we didn't do anything, but NGO do a lot of things? And they didn't feel shame about that. And also, I feel sorry. Uh, I feel very sorry and also angry is Although you don't uh, want to abolish the death penalty, uh, you afraid the public opinion. That's fine, but there are some innocent cases, like Chiu Heshen, like Wang Xingfu. It's very clear that they are innocent one. And uh, Chiu Heshen, he is in detention center for more than thirty-two years. And we ask the uh, person to uh, to have the uh, pardon to am amnesty him, but we didn't get any response from her. And uh, we asked the Minister of Justice because they have means to do something for, for him. They can investigate, reinvestigate this case, but they didn't do anything. So right, right now, we're just trying to uh, do more campaign. But I, I think uh, every time when president, he, she want to make decision if he want, he have to if he want to pardon someone, she will ask uh, the opinion from uh, from Minister of Justice. And of course, the answer is not not what we want. And they didn't really uh, reconsider this case and pre present the, the the evidence to to them. So I I feel I feel very sad and very uh, um, sorry for this. Although. I, I have to say some other some uh, uh, other human rights issue maybe not so bad, but for the death penalty. <laughs> yeah. The other part of the question was about the education about. Okay. Uh, um, yeah. uh,
can you go into schools um, um, and, and how does the education curriculum uh, mm. deal with this uh, issue? Does okay. it follow public opinion or uh, is it very conservative? I think we have um, I think we have more young teachers in school, so that's our opportunity. And we we do uh, cooperate with teachers in uh, elementary, uh, high school and uh, university uh, teachers to uh, to have the uh, how to say that word. Uh, curriculum. Uh, I, I, yeah. Yes, <laughs> this is a word that I, I cannot pronounce every time. OK, so we uh, we, we do cooperate with with them to um, uh, to uh, to have some uh, teaching materials prepare for some teaching materials for, for them. And I think it's good that uh, uh, a lot of teachers, they are willing to do do that in their class or invite us to have speech in school. So it's not a problem, but sometimes yes, you, you can see that some parents or some uh, uh, principals of school, they say, OK, this is not good, but still uh, if teacher they want to do that, they cannot stop them. But this is not uh, um, this is not uh, how to say this is private um, teaching materials and we, we contact with teachers, but not for uh, not from the education department. But still, I think uh, uh, recently uh, more teachers and uh, uh, education department minister, uh, ministry, education ministry, they also have a uh, human rights education um, group. So they also think about the human rights issue. So I, I, I feel it's, it's much better than before, but not enough. Um, um, um. Uh, Bu, are you you are you able to come in on on this one? Kind of <laughs> no, no, no. I I just uh, sort of uh, respond to Susan saying, you know, uh, no matter what, um, uh, who can make decision for uh, someone's uh, life and death? Um, how can you know hundred people, uh, hundred and twenty people know what is? Um, so mm, I'm not sure that um, well verify the, the, the uh, or justify the the, uh, mm. the penalty. Kind of one kind of follow up question. Um, so the decision about um, uh, whether it's a life sentence or the death penalty in Taiwan, uh, that's essentially made by, is it by three judges? Um, and um, would you prefer to see a move, for example, to a, uh, a jury system? Um, is that something that that um, your kind of campaign has um, has proposed? <laughs> um, yeah, I think this is our another our challenge uh, uh, in 2023 because that time we will have a, a system called citizen judge. So the first trial we will have three uh, professional judge and six uh, citizen judge and to send uh, to 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 uh, sentence a case. And uh, we don't know it's good or bad. It's good or bad things because for the low years challenge, they need to say um, because right now when they defend for a case, they always say something that people don't understand in a in a very low uh, the low language. And right now they need to explain to the uh, to the citizens to understand. So that's another challenge. And also, um, um, uh. We feel that if these uh, judges they understand more uh, the case and also understand more the background of these uh, people, maybe and and then have to do the decision, make the decision to 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 uh, to kill people. I think it's it's more difficult. So we uh, right right now we have some uh, uh, some uh, trial, I, I mock trial uh, right now. But uh, in 2023, it will become the real uh, the, the system that we will Im implement. So um, we, we don't know the, the we, we, we don't know how to uh, think about it yet. But right now uh, we, we, we want to uh, gather more information from different country. And also uh, we, we are planning to do more uh, lawyers training uh, right now. And but uh, but for for your uh, information, uh, 
for the recent year, um, uh, every year we have one uh, death sentence or zero death sentence, and the execution uh, is also after 2016. So I think that that's our uh, strategy of uh, work that we we, re we really champ lawyers and have uh, uh, best practice in the code. And uh, then uh, we have few uh, death sentence and uh, we hope we have few uh, uh, death sentence. Yeah. OK, so I, I had a kind of a um, when you look back on your last um, uh, 20 years in this field, um, do you feel you have one particular uh, success that you're most proud about? Um, you know, I always feel that I did something um, value. Mm -hmm. Of course, um, there is no success until we abolish the death penalty. But I feel, but I still, I in some moment I feel very happy. I feel very happy is that I saw, um, I I saw uh, the seeds trio, the three young innocent people. They are released from court, and I saw uh, Xu Zhiqiang. He was released from detention center, and also Zheng Xingzhe, and also Xie Zhihong. They are all the innocent case that in Taiwan and in proof that they are innocent. And I was there every time, and uh, I was part of the campaign. And I saw that they came back to their family, their own life, and right now their life, their life is really good. I think I feel happy. I, I will not say it's a success because still uh, it's, it's a lot of challenge for them because they are in detention center for so long and they have a lot of trauma and some some people will have the um, you know mental issue and it's very difficult to go back to society because still some people think okay although you uh, although the, they say you are innocent but maybe it, it just don't have enough uh, enough uh, evidence so it's really difficult uh, uh, for them, so yeah, and uh, <laughs> I, I, I feel I sometimes I um, some some friends uh, they say that uh, what my job or our colleagues' job we did a very sad job because almost every year we will we will have execution, and uh, and some of them we. Even we believe that they are innocent, but we don't we don't have a way to uh, help them. And uh, when you I I I met uh, almost 100, you know, death row inmates in my whole life until now. And when everyone described them as a uh, as a monster and very b bad person. Yes, they commit very bad crime, but when you have chance to meet them, you will see that they are human being too and a lot of them they stay in detention center for more than 10 years 15 years 20 years i i feel that they are already changed if taiwan don't have the death penalty if taiwan have life sentence over 20 years maybe they are they are already they can release from prison and we can see that they already changed so i feel that how come our society our society why we just give them a, a chance. And I think we should have our, a confidence to us that um, uh, if we can do, and not if, we have to do a good uh, prison reform. And uh, uh, we we need to help them, everyone who are, uh, no matter what reason they are in prison, when they release from prison, we need to help them to go back to society because they are our, they are in our society. So. I think we can do that. I think Taiwan can do that. So still is a long way to go, but I'm happy still have. Um, I'm, I'm also happy that more and more people concerned about the prison reform issue and more and more people concerned about the victims uh, protect victims issue also. So uh, although it's very difficult, but I still have hope. I have a question here from one of our former students, um, hmm. Mao Nakano. Uh, and she asks, thanks for uh, so much for such an insightful talk. Do victims and their families tend to be more supportive of the death penalty? And if so, what strategies can be taken to persuade them to uh, to change their minds? Mm -hmm. um, 
for TADP Taiwan Alliance to end the death penalty, we feel that no matter we about we should we want to abolish the death penalty or not, but we need to support the victims uh, victims' rights. But the victims' rights is not only the execution, not only the death penalty, it's a various uh, way. Okay, and uh, if victims they want to they they think that uh, the people deserve the death penalty, it's their right to say because they are the people suffer more. And I, I will not say you cannot say so because. It's too difficult, it's too to suffer, so I will not say no, you, you, you should support anti death penalty. No, I will not say so. But what we trying to do is to have more, uh, more uh, protection for the human rights, not only money, but in, in every way, if they need help, they need help. Um, I think. TADP is the NGO that in Taiwan, uh, I think from the very beginning, we think about the victims' rights and we invite victims group to Taiwan to share their uh, experience. And uh, we have a lot of lawyers cooperate with us. So they defend for the bad guy, but also they are the lawyer for the victims. So sometimes they know that we are, we know a lot about the victims. So sometimes lawyers will ask me to say, uh, Xin Yi, can you help me to find social worker to find the uh, psychiatrist for victims for his his case? Of course, this is the, not the pub. Uh, this is not under under. Uh, this is not the. Uh, this is under table help because we we know more people, so uh, I can help the lawyer. But uh, every time we will try, and. Uh, mm, uh, for me, uh, if I can, I, if I talk to the public, I will say. Uh, to abolish the death penalty is the uh, is the government's uh, criminal uh, justice policy. OK, everyone can have a say. Of course, victims, of course, everyone. But if the judges say I sentence these people to death because of the victims, I think it's unfair. Because if the of, of, of course, if the people is the real one, but how about if this case is the innocent one? Then you say because of the victim say so. So I I I miss uh, mistrial this case and he sentenced to death and killed. Can you say so? No. So if the judge he want to sentence someone to to death, he need to say in his name, not in victim's name or in if the government they want to execute the people in in your own name, not in victim's name, because you just give the responsibility to the victims. And I, I think they are the most, they are the people in this situation. They suffer a lot, so we don't need we, we don't we, we shouldn't you know uh, give this burden uh, to them. Yeah. But I, I feel I, I feel in the uh, previous years, more and more victims, uh, they can talk to us. Maybe not 100% say, oh, okay, I support the death penalty, anti-death penalty, but they will say, okay, in some situation, I support you, or even we can uh, talk in some panel or discuss. And of course, we have some victims support anti-death penalty, but of course, some victims, they don't support anti-death penalty. Yeah. But I, I had another kind of international uh, question. So um, do you feel that Taiwan can learn any lessons from other countries that have uh, remove the death penalty. Um, um, even even in the UK, it's um, not so distant. We still talk about this past history and um, mm. the way that we did execute some uh, mm. innocent uh, people. Mm. Um, and 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 when we think about public opinion, uh, often um, public opinion actually would sometimes public opinion in the UK would like to return to the death penalty, but it's never taken yeah. too too seriously. So. Mm. Um, 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 I, could you kind of comment on whether uh, other international cases um, okay. are useful for Taiwan? I think I want to uh, mention two countries in Asia. One is, one is Mongolia and one is South Korea. I think uh, Mongolia is a very good example because in 2010, their president announced that uh, he want to abolish the death penalty. And uh, then he said uh, there is a moratorium in, in Mongolia. And after two years, the 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 parliamentary uh, nine ninety percent of the uh, par parliamentary members support to sign the ICCPR, the second uh, second optional protocol. 
So in the in the 2010, when the president uh, say he want to abolish the death penalty, you know, the majority of the MP they say no, they they don't want to abolish the death penalty. But but the pres the president take the responsibility to uh, talk to the MP and to uh, talk to them to convince them. So 2012. 90% of the MP, they support the second optional protocol. And then they abolish the death penalty uh, in law. And so I think this is, a, um, uh, I think the Mongolia's experience is really good because we we uh, we visit Mongolia, I believe in 2015. And you can see that when the government say they want to abolish the death penalty, they just take action in, in the government way. And uh, so, then it's success. So when you say the 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 the, the uh, parliamentary um, because afraid of the public opinion, they will not change the mind. No, you can see Mongolia has a good example. Someone need to take action. Uh, yeah, and the second uh, the second uh, opinion uh, the second example is South Korea, because I think they don't have execution. They have moratorium until now is more than twenty three years, and. Uh, so a lot of country when before they uh, uh, abolish that abolish the death penalty by law, uh, they have long term long time moratorium. So we can see that okay in Asia we have we can have good, we still have good example, but of course uh, in Taiwan we will always say okay you can see that Japan still have the death penalty, the United States still have the death penalty, but. But you can still find that United States, they their number of execution and uh, you know is less and less. And also they have more uh, states, they have moratorium. So we need to learn uh, for good example, especially when the government, Taiwan government say Taiwan is going to abolish the death penalty. So of course he need to learn uh, experience from good example, not bad example. But sometimes our government didn't do that, so we, we try to, um, uh, you know, we try to <laughs> talk to them and try to let them know that there are a lot of good examples that we should follow. So, um, so uh, Bonnie, you've got a, a follow up. Um, Bonnie, did you want to come in? Um, let me see if we if I can. Um, um, um. Bonnie, would you like to, if you just, yeah, go ahead, Bonnie. Um, yes, <laughs> hi, I wasn't sure I needed to be on camera, but thank you so much for this talk. And um, there's so much material packed in there, so much to tease out. I am, I'm very moved by your work. Thank you for all the issues that you have raised and your commitment. I just want to quickly say, because I think, you know, the death penalty is often used as a justification, you know, as a way of deterring crime. But I just want to say that, yeah, you know, and I and I think we're all preaching to the to the choir here that it does mm. not, you know, yes. there's empirical evidence from criminology to say that it does not deter crime. And so I just sent a link where the UN said it very clearly already. Oh, in um, 2015. Okay, that sorry, um, <laughs> that it does not do so. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, thanks for that, um, uh, Bonnie, for adding that um, uh, that link in the um, uh, in the chat. Thank you. So we're um, we're coming to the uh, end of our uh, session. Does anyone have any kind of final uh, questions you'd like to um, uh, to raise? I just had one um, um, one more question I've been wanting to ask. Um, um, one thing we see um, with a number of Taiwan's civil society um, uh, movements is that the Taiwan government is quite encouraging for them internationally. In other mm -hmm. words, for example, uh, supporting um, uh, NGOs to go out of Taiwan um, and um, uh, tell Taiwan's story. Um, and we saw this, for example, with uh, LGBT rights groups. Um, uh, so even though um, uh, often they're not so helpful domestically, uh, does the Taiwan government support you to uh, go out on the international stage? Mm -mm. 
I think the uh, the Minjuji Hui, Taiwan Democracy Foundation, Foundation for Democracy. Or democracy. Yeah. yeah. But but you cannot say it's a kind of uh, <laughs> government funding, but uh, be because they are more uh, for human rights issue. So yeah. And uh, uh, on, on the country, uh, I think we, we always encourage our government to go to the international stage. I mean, uh, every three years there is a World, World Congress against the death penalty. And I think next one will be next year in Berlin. OK, and we always encourage that Minister of Justice, he need to send someone to join the, the con World Congress with us. Then you can understand that uh, the whole world is discuss how to abolish the death penalty. Maybe you can find a way, but the, from the second one we know and then until now they didn't you know, send anyone to uh, go with us. And uh, um, yeah, but uh, but of course uh, uh, in Taiwan, uh, uh, we invite uh, the government invite the international expert to review our uh, report on ICCPR and ICESCR. And I think that's good because uh, every time, every four years when we have this opportunity and the uh, international experts, they came to Taiwan, they will uh, raise more human rights issue to Taiwan government and also NGO. So we learn a lot of, of that. So I, I have to say that um, uh, the, to ratify to governance is, uh, is very important uh, stage uh, step for Taiwan and also uh, I'm also the board member of uh, Governors Watch is a, is a very important NGO in Taiwan to help uh, everyone to understand the uh, human rights standard. Yeah. Fantastic. So um, we've come to 1015, so we need to bring things to a close and get ready for our next uh, student um, uh, panel. So I'd like to thank uh, Nishi for sharing her long experience of struggling for uh, human rights and opposition to the uh, the death uh, penalty and we hope that in the future uh, you get a chance to um, uh, come to London um, to actually share with us um, uh, in, in, in person because we've just touched upon the surface of so many different uh, issues. 